Hey guys, my name is Corbin Dunn, and in this video, I'm going to talk about how I made my Avid CNC table more stiff. The reason to have a stiffer table is to get more accurate cuts. In episode two of my Avid CNC build series, I went over how I welded the table. Click the link in the description or above for more info on that video. A quick synopsis is that I designed a metal table based on Avid CNC's leg kits design. I used a quarter inch thick steel throughout my design with 4x4s on the longitudinal y-axis and 2x4s everywhere else. Now this table is really heavy and a huge improvement from the Avid aluminum table legs, but I'm still having some problems and I want to make it better. When I use the CNC, I don't get a lot of flex on the x-axis, probably due to this box design that helps stabilize it. But I do get a lot of flex on the longer y-axis. Someone suggested that I should add a longitudinal piece on the bottom, along with some supports running down to it to help prevent racking. This is my plan to test the amount of actual flex I'm getting. If the table moves, it'll move my dial indicator, and I can find out how far it's flexing. So I did a lot of air test cuts to try and figure out what would cause my table to move the most. And what I'll settled on is a pocket that I just created in Vectric V-Carve where it moves along the y-axis really quickly back and forth about a half an inch. So when I did the test, I could see the dial indicator moving up to about 10 thousandths of an inch when it was doing the air cut, and when doing the rapid movements up to almost 17 thousandths of an inch. So these are the numbers that I'm looking to improve. So I opted to use my MIG welder due to just speed and ease of use. I roughly aligned the longitudinal pieces with my existing supports and attack them into place. I wanted to minimize warping of the table by applying excessive heat, so I did a lot of short welds, wait for it to cool a bit, and then would add a little bit more to it after it was cool. Now these pieces really aren't structural, they're not supporting the table itself, so they don't really need to be deep, really good welds. In fact, the short welds were pretty ugly, but I'm going for functionality over beauty. Cutting some of the 45s on my small horizontal bandsaw was a little bit difficult. I had it hit some of the pieces on the back blade support. I eventually jimmied a solution together and cut them out, but it took way longer than it should have. So finally, I got all the pieces welded on and the table cleaned back up. I did another shake test running the same program as before. It's a little hard to see exactly what's happening on the dial indicator, but the movement arc is now about 5 thousandths of an inch. Originally, it was getting about 10 thousandths of an inch during the air cut, and up to 17 thousandths of an inch during the rapids, and now I only see it move at any given time only about 5 thousandths. So this is a huge improvement, and I'm pretty happy with the results. I did some more indicator tests just to see how much I could move the table by hand, and just by hand, I could probably move it about 5 thousandths of an inch, I'm not sure if this is just flexing the table or if I need additional weight added to it to prevent that type of movement. But at this point, I'm just going to use the machine and see how well it does for uh, other cuts. And if I do want to improve it more, maybe I'll try and add some more weight, some concrete, or I could just reduce the acceleration in Mach 4. So that's it. Thanks, everyone.